Hello and welcome. Today we're talking about doing live video. You've probably heard me talking a lot about live video because it is so important. In order for you to sell your product service, you have to get your beautiful face out there. So today I'm super excited to have with me a very special guest, Suzanne Glover, who has over 35 years of professional acting experience and has been one of the top earners in the Screen Actors Guild, is still a member of the Screen Actors Guild. And so Suzanne has lots of very special, unique tools and tips for us as someone who has a unique experience, not something that most of us have, having been and still is a professional actor. So Suzanne, welcome. It is so great to have you here today. Thank you very much, Gloria. It's wonderful being here. Thank you. So, Suzanne, obviously you've got this incredible background, which, you know, most of us don't have. So why do you think today it is so important to use video and become a video influencer? Okay, the importance. Why, 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 right? All right. Well, understanding that video is evolving. So let's go back to 1950s where TV came on, right? And uh -huh. video was new film was new. It has evolved since then. So all those years, it evolved from black and white to color to high definition to film, all these things. And now the public is now being pushed into it, correct? Yeah. So why is it important? It's because it's going to continue to evolve. If you think about it, it evolved within the professional. I watched it. I have watched it over 35 years. My first commercial, I don't have it, but it's like a huge eight by 10 tape, inch tape, it's huge. as a minute. So nowadays you get hours and hours and hours on a little tiny drive. Yeah. So understanding that it's gonna keep evolving is the most important thing. It's gonna keep evolving and, and understanding that if you wanna stay ahead of the curve, You've got to get on board because the world wants to see. I could give you statistics all over the place of how many videos people watch, but that's boring. Suffice to say, people are watching videos now more than content, okay? More than like reading. Right. So that's the first reason because it's going to evolve. You want to get into doing it. That's important because now, now that the public is aware of it, they've just been thrown into the whole thing because of the virus, right? Absolutely. Got to get a camera. I couldn't get equipment last year. I always buy equipment. I couldn't get equipment because the whole world was buying equipment and trying to figure this whole thing out. Well, it's going to continue to evolve. So right now, everyone's at this first level of just getting used to the camera. I did that when I was in my first little small commercial way back in the 80s. I froze the first time I talked to the camera. <laughs> you know, I know what it feels like. Right. But it's it's actually can be an advantage because what I was was I was I was a model. I had to become a TV actress in order to keep going. And that's what is happening to businesses today. That's why it's so relevant is because in order to keep my career going, I, I was too old to model. So I right. had to start learning to speak in front of the camera. It was not pretty in for, at first. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it usually isn't, right? It isn't, it isn't. And I had all it, all the help, you know? Yeah. But, um, it was very competitive because the producers would sit there at the auditions. Now, they were on tapes, you know, VHS tapes. Yeah. They weren't in the room with us, so they would watch the VHS tapes afterwards. And they would sit there and fast forward. And if you caught their eye, then they would stop. It was like scrolling down a feed in social media today. You've got to catch their attention. Exactly. So it's evolved. It's evolved. So I know how people feel like this is really difficult. However, it's the beginning. And what happens is the market is going to continue to evolve and get more sophisticated. I'll give you an example. Cell phones, when they first came out, remember, well, there weren't cell phones. You probably remember there weren't cell phones back in the yeah. 80s. Oh, yeah. I remember no cell phones. <laughs> there weren't answering machines. There weren't cell phones. There was no social media. And I was a paralegal at the time. And I remember 
sitting, standing in the, what do you call it? The entry, the waiting room of my law office, the office I was working in. And in walked this woman, a box strung over her shoulder, like a purse. It was like foot by foot, you know, and her <laughs> receiver, her receiver was like this, you know, she's talking on the phone. And I'm thinking, who does she think she is that she can't be away from the phone for two seconds? This was in the 80s. Okay, they've evolved. The cell phone has evolved. So now it's got to keep getting better. As people start getting into it, they become more aware. They aren't happy with something like this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> they want something smaller. They want something better. They want something faster. And that's called market sophistication. So it's going to continue to evolve meaning as the audience gets more aware and more sophisticated they're going to want more that's again why you want to become a video influencer and the last thing is you do want to show your face now i know that you recently did a post about all the good things you can do and not show your face so right. This is, and that's because most people are very resistant. This is like the top challenge out there for people today to get on camera. You're, you're being asked to be a spokesperson. Yes, and even though I did that training, because I know there's some people that will just never show their faces, I don't want anybody to be confused. I absolutely believe you should be showing your face. So, yeah. I was going to say, that's what most people want to hear. That's what, so you were serving your audience because you were giving them something that they want to hear. Yeah. But I want to challenge those who really want to stand out, those who really want to be successful. That's what who I'm talking to right now is. So I'm separating from the herd, the people who really want to be successful. And those people, I'm going to say to you, you really want to show your face on camera. And here's why. There's a part of our brain that is biologically, it's called the face recognition part of our brain. It's a fusiform gyrus. And it seeks out faces. You know how we see the man in the moon or a uh, face in a tree or face in rocks or things? Or artists use this concept in their pictures, their paintings to get, why do you think they do that? Engagement. They're, right. they're using a very primal biological something in your body to make you want to engage with their picture. So if you just show up on camera, that's half the engagement problem right there. Absolutely. Yes. Body language, body language, smile. You know how when you're smiling on the phone, you're a salesperson, you're talking on the phone. I mean, listen to my voice right now. I, I used to do phone sales and I got a cheesy smile on my face right now, don't I? <laughs> yes. And it makes a difference. It changes your voice, doesn't it? It does. You know, listen to me now. And now listen to me. You know, I'm just going to talk like this. Really? Hi, I, this is Suzanne. Hi, this is Suzanne. See the difference? Yeah. So it's little things like that that can be so effective or so really bad on camera. And that's going to lead us to, okay, now I'm scared to show up. So that's, uh, <laughs> anyway, I wanted to just say why you want to be a video influencer because it's not going to go away. And yes, totally. It's not, it's not going anywhere. It's, it's and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So Suzanne, what, what do you think it means to be a bit, a video influencer? That's where we were going next. I love, you are just like on my list, man. <laughs> I mean, you're going down my list that I didn't even give you. <laughs> okay. What does it mean? Now that is a really good question because people think, I have found that people think, oh, well, I can't be a video influencer because that means particularly now I know we're talking to baby boomers. Mostly I'm in my 60s. And right. do I really want to create a tribe of a million people? Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> right. <laughs> so so what does it mean to be a video influencer? I'm going to tell you right now. And I talk about this in my book. There are three types of video influencers. One, there's a Zoom influencer, which is what we're doing right now. Right. Right. You have Zoom to show up. Right. You're Zoom influencer. This is my own. This is my own language. This is not from someplace. I love I, okay. A Zoom influencer. I hope I don't get any copyright problems. But a Zoom influencer is a person who is conducting business over Zoom. An attorney, someone who wants a financial planner, a network marketer, someone who has to show up. And interestingly enough, and I'm not disparaging this person I just spoke with, but I just spoke with a corporate person 
who is so, so in image and brand that they do not do videos. They hire the professional actors or actresses. I, they have very good videos, but they're not showing up on video. And so I was just having a Zoom call with him. And you know where he was? His head was down here like this. And he had, and he had glasses on. <laughs> and he had glasses on that see how they're reflecting? Yeah. I couldn't see his eyeballs. I couldn't see his eyeballs. And you know what? Eye contract is so important. I mean, maybe okay. So I don't look that bad down here because I oh, oh he was in the dark too. <laughs> okay. So if you're doing Zoom, what's the difference here? You know, how does this feel? Not smiling. Right. Compared to a person who's up here. How's that feel? And smiling. Totally different, right? Night and day different. Different. So, so there's a Zoom influencer. And it makes a difference to who you are. And, and I'll tell you right now, getting your head up in the top third is a power thing. It's a photography thing. So if you get your eyes up in the top third and you get closer to it, you have more power. And if you're way down here, it's a power thing. You hold more power. So, okay, so that's a Zoom influencer. And why do you wanna be a Zoom influencer? You can be a real estate person and talk to people over Zoom and because you're selling houses, for example, right? Right. Okay, so that's first, Zoom influencer. The second is a tech influencer. A tech influencer, in my term, is a person who uses technology, like a sales funnel, right. to automate their lead flow. Okay, I'll give you an example. I have a phone funnel. Now, I have several, I have several funnels because I really, I'm a tech influencer. I am not a star influencer I'll talk about in the middle, but the tech influencer is what I am because that gives me a lot of free time. It gives me um, a lot of ability to walk the people through a customer journey the way that I want them to go. And it automates my lead generation for me. So a tech influencer is somebody who has a funnel. And what is a funnel? A funnel is an automated customer journey. And right. I'm using videos for that. Yes, and I recommend funnels all the time. Okay. I am oh. always trying to get my people to create funnels and understand the importance of funnels. So I love that, a tech influencer with funnels. That's right. And I, particularly now, some people have funnels who don't have video, but video is, research shows video converts better. Now you, got, you have to do it well. I'm, again, right. you're going to start shaking in your boots because I have a story. I signed up for a video, uh, not a video, it was a, it was a software pro program online, right? It was a, something to host my course. Talked to the guy on the phone, great guy, signed up. He was the owner. He made a mistake. He did a webinar, a live webinar to welcome us. He was so bad. He was so offensive. He oh. was so offensive. I canceled. So wow. he, he uh huh. Yeah. Mouth noises, arrogant. He can't, he didn't know how to act on camera. You see, there are the thing about being in the industry for so long is I learned what not to do. You know, I was in audition after audition and the feedback was if I'm not getting work, I am not doing something right. So it's I true. got a mentor. So I got a mentor. Once I started getting that mentor who knew the secrets, that's when I started getting work. I got all sorts of work. I mean, I got into top percentage of earners. I got on the Screen Actors Guild Council. I started teaching for the guild on their conservatory and I opened my own school. So getting that mentor really boosted me. And that's where the public right now is really suffering. I feel like they don't have some way of knowing how to do this. So when I use that example, I feel really bad because a lot of people say, well, what do I do? Take it seriously, but we'll talk about that. Okay, so Zoom fluencer, tech fluencer, and um, star fluencer. A star influencer is what we all think of a video influencer, where the person has a million people and they're doing content all the time. Now, I personally do not want to be doing content all the time. I, I don't 
I don't do that. In fact, my social media isn't very much because I'm a tech fluencer. And I'll give you a, a, a example. Um, a client of mine, Teresa, she spent five years, she did 600 videos and over five years. And she just looked at me. We were at an event. She said, she looked at me. She said, I need you. I go, why? She says, I've been doing video for five years and I'm getting nowhere. So she's one of those people who has been churning out video, churning out video, churning out video. And she started out really confident. And then she started, started really, really shrinking down because the more you do this wrong, the more it wears on your confidence versus, mm. versus the more you do it right. I mean, it just, I've had clients, um, I'll tell you one story and then I'll be quiet. Um, um, Sally was a client of mine. She had gone into midlife. And I talk about her in my book too, because she's an epitome of how this works. Because my book has become a midlife movie star, right? Um, it's the subtitle. So Sally, she hit midlife and she was a very successful dental manager, manager in a dentist's office. And so what happened was she went to bed for two years. Just like that, hit midlife, wasn't prepared, went to bed, two years, lost life, right? Wow, yeah. She went to the doctor, the doctor said, you're gonna die. She came to me, she said, I need to do something. She took charge and we worked together and she started blossoming. She started feeling really good about herself and she ended up going to an acting convention, playing her violin, she hadn't played that in years, playing her violin, doing comedy, now you're, Baby boomers would like this. Remember Jack Benny, where he would play this and then he'd tell a joke. Right. That's what she did. And she wow. placed, she placed in the top three. And her she felt like a, a a celebrity. And that's what happens when you can learn this the right way. Um, I had a teenager. She said, "I said, well, you've been around here for a few months. How do you feel? You came here to be a model. What do you feel?" And she says, "Um, you make me feel pretty." Well. No, no, I don't make you feel pretty. The process of learning how to do video the right way and, and, and seeing your progress, it's just like magic. It makes you feel pretty. It makes you feel confident. It makes you the celebrity of your life. So why become a video influencer? Because you have to. Why, right. become, a, because, why become a video influencer and do it well? Because it makes you look fabulous and feel fabulous. And what is it? Do you have to do a big tribe? No, because a star fluencer with a big tribe still may not make as much money as a Zoom fluencer who is selling high-end tickets. Absolutely, bang on. So Suzanne, if you had to give our viewers who do not have your background in front of the camera as a professional model first and then an actor, so you're talking about people like, you know, like me, you know, Joe Public, um, what would be your three top starting tips for those of us who are not professionals in front of the camera? What you know, people, people are going to think that you're, um, you know, I fed you these questions. I didn't because <laughs> I wrote out an outline and so far you've asked me the why and the what, and the next three are pretty much the tips. Actually, I have great. four tips, but that's okay. Okay, great. Give okay. us four tips. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, so the first thing is you want to know where you want to go with video. So what does that mean? Where do you want to go with video? So now you know, because we're kind of, when I do things, I whenever I have a webinar or a class, it's implementation. Where right. so far, you know why you want to be a video. And hopefully now you understand that it's really important to take it seriously and get in the game because it's not going to go away and it's going to get more competitive. Now you understand that, well, I don't necessarily have to have a big tribe. So where do I fit? So ask yourself, where do you fit? Are you a Zoom fluencer? Are you a tech fluencer? Or are you a star fluencer? So you know this, all right? Now, where do you want to be with video? So let's say you are a Zoom fluencer. Where is that? What does that mean? Where do you want to be with video? Well, I'll give you an example. If I were a Zoom fluencer and I was selling a high-end ticket, where do I want to be with video? I want to have X number of videos working for me um, on an automated on an automated level. And here's why. For example, I'll give you an example of what I do. 
when I get somebody on the phone, before they get on the phone, I have a very simple phone funnel and it's one video. Now, where do you want to go with video? If you're a Zoom influencer, well, then you need one or two or three really good videos, really good. Pre-qualify them, pre-educate them, pre-warm them up so that I, and be consistent so that when they get on the phone with you, they're already sold. I'll give you an example. This is the best way to do this. There's two examples here. One example is you're consistent. So yes. You're consistent. You know exactly, and I have all sorts of examples on this, but I'll give you one. When I sold, um, I sold, uh, I labeled and produced my own anti-wrinkle pill, and I sold it in the newspapers, okay? So those people went to a call center. So when I had these salespeople in my call center talking, I was like, oh, I cannot listen to these people. They are they are scamming the moon, man. <laughs> I'm going to get returns and oh my goodness. Okay. I didn't have any control over what the salespeople were saying. So when you're marketing, and I was talking to this about an insurance person, I was talking to an insurance guy because they have compliance. Don't you guys have compliance? In, in the network marketing world? Yes, absolutely. Right. So compliance, this is a real good thing for compliance because then they know exactly what's being sold. So as an example, um, if I had done a video, so what I've done, I had the people, newspaper, call center, fulfillment, walk away from that because I didn't like what was being sold. Instead of that, the ad goes to a webinar, all right? Now I know exactly, I'm either doing it live, which you need to do for a while until you get it right, or you automate it and you know exactly what's being sold. And if you script it, you know exactly where things fall off. Okay, so I'm saying, where do you wanna go with video? If you're a Zoom influencer, you should have one video or two or three that are absolutely knockout, pre-educate. How do you do that? We'll talk about that. but. That's what you want to do. If you're a tech fluencer, where do you want to go? You need to have a funnel with videos and you need to walk your person through that. For example, like right now, this is a video that I'm using, right? Right. What are you getting out of this? You're getting education. You're getting value. But you're also getting awareness of me. You see? Absolutely. Yeah. So each video that you do should have a strategic objective. There's a whole, there's one reason I'm doing this video for your awareness of me. That's it. All right. This is that video and that customer journey part. Okay. So where do you want to take video? If you are a star influencer, I, I don't really like doing that because I, at my age, don't want to be producing a lot of content. But if you are a star influencer, you need to do a lot of content. Where do you want to go with video? Each video needs to have an objective. And I do talk about this in my book about you should have a back end to anything you do to drive traffic. Because Absolutely. You know, you know what happens is it's like you have a party and you're getting the house ready for the party, right? And then you're sending out the invitations, but you haven't set the house up. So it's kind of backwards. Normally you would set the house up and get the house ready, order the food and then send out invitations. Right. But people are sending out invitations, doing their videos and not sending them to anywhere because the house isn't ready because they don't have a back end. Exactly. Does that make sense? Yes, and you always, I, I always say, you always have to have a call to action. You know, it's every once in a blue moon, maybe you do a video that's pure content, that's pure added value and there's no call to action. But that's every once in a blue moon. I mean, I agree with you totally. You need to know where you want to go. What is the purpose of this video? And what is your call to action for the video? Absolutely. Every video. Exactly. And everyone, and I walk through a video framework about that in my course and how you can use video in these different parts of the, of the journey, meaning where are they in your journey? So the call to action is different. Does that make yes. sense? 
Yes, Absolutely, yes. because you might have a call to action if your video is specifically for prospects, for people who really don't know you. Maybe your call to action is to have someone opt into a free guide, something of, of value, a lead magnet. You know, if you're talking to people who already know, like, and trust you, or, and you're doing a webinar, which is a longer period of time, you've got more time to present the idea, sell the idea, and promote it, then your call to action might be a $300 product, right? So very important to know where your prospect is, where your viewer is, and their relationship with you. Exactly. And I just got a chill when you said that, Gloria, because you know how many people don't don't understand that? Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> yes. I'll have, I'll have a conversation because I do these diagnostic calls for free. And I'll have a conversation. I'll say, well, where is the person in the who are you talking to? They don't know who you're talking to. They're talking to. And then I'll, I'll say, well, where are they in the customer journey? And they go, what? The customer journey, where are they in getting to know you? And yes. how many videos have you done before this video? And then it usually, okay, when I used to interact on social media and I'd ask that question, I'd never get a response. They would just disappear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is. So I'm going to tell your audience, I'm sure that you've been telling them, but the customer journey, if they don't know what that is, it's a journey that they're walking through to get to know you. It is, um, I have my own customer journey because I was a salesperson. I sold timeshare, which I'm not proud of saying, but I was good at it. <laughs> I felt like I was selling a bridge. I've done network marketing, which was a step up way better. But, you know, when you're talking to these people, you've got to have them on um, a journey. And so what I've done is I've made up my own from this and walking them through, for example, I can't, I, introduce, I interrupt myself a lot and there's actually a reason for that. But um, in the newspaper ad tutorials that I used to write, there is a process that you want to walk the customer through. They want to have some credibility. They want to ha get to know you. They want to know uh, some emotion. They've got to have social proof and you've got to put these into a certain sequence so that people will, that's, that's how their mind works. Um, yes. That's how their mind works. And so when I learned how to do the copywriting with the advertorial, um, I won't tell you all the steps because it's too complicated. You can't teach copywriting in two seconds here, but there was credibility before social proof because the way the mind works is they want to know, well, what's in it for me and, and logical and logical and then you got to get the emotion in there because they yes. buy on the emotion. So you, you want to walk your customer through a journey that elicits certain feelings, certain thoughts in a certain sequence. And if that sounds too complicated, it's pretty simple. It's right. let them get to know you, let them get to trust you, let them get to love you, and then solve a problem. <laughs> okay. <laughs> exactly. It's not that complicated. So, Suzanne... We've touched on a lot of different things here and you've given us a lot of great information. And I know you've got your book out and if people want to get your book and find out more about you, what's the best way to do that? SuzanneGlover.com, S-U-Z-A-N-N-E-G-L-O-V-E-R.com. I'm also on LinkedIn. It's uh, Suzanne Glover. And, um, and I do have a diagnostic call. If you go to the homepage, there's two ways that you can find out one way about my course. It's um, the first link, something about how to find out about selling on video because you really want to influence on video. Yes. And the other way is getting my book. And um, just so you know, I would like to share one more thing and that is being strategic. And I do have a st strategy call. Um, Fantastic. You want to be strategic about it. I didn't get to share all the things I had written, but you do want to be strategic in your customer journey. Absolutely. Love it. So SuzanneGlover.com and the title of your book is Be a Video Influencer. So go to Suzanne's website, pick up a copy of her book, find out about what Suzanne has to offer. And I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much, Suzanne, for I know we didn't have enough time to cover all the valuable information you've got to share, but you've given us some really good ideas and some some great things to think about. So thank you.